Does anybody know where Smoo went? Not a lot of ideas here. University Center at 3480 McTavish Street will be closing in 2018 and 2019 for renovations. The following work will be completed during the closure. Asbestos abatement, rebuilding the electrical distribution, floor tile replacement, finally, replacement of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, construction of a new washroom on the second floor, and now this is the one I'm really excited about, various upgrades to the building emergency power, gas entrance, washrooms, and telecommunication distribution. For the time being, student groups like the McGill Tribune, Midnight Kitchen, and the Players Theater have all been moved to temporary spaces. To tell you the truth though, I don't really care where Samu is, I care a lot more about who they are and what they do. And I want to learn more than what I can just find on a website. So in order to do just that, I've compiled a list of hard-hitting questions that I think might help us get to the bottom of these intricacies of student government. Let's go see what the execs have to say. So it's smooth tradition that when you're going to meet the president, you bring a gift with you. In our case, we decided on Kraft Smooth Peanut Butter, which is Trey's favorite food. Hey, Trey. Yeah? We've come to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> I accept the offer. I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> First of all, can I call you Mr. President? Absolutely. Go Excellent. Great. Okay, so what does president do? President is responsible for a lot of things. My role is more just kind of uh, work at the high level with a lot of Miguel Admin, at least in SMU, help with the managing, help with the operations, make sure we're functioning in, in, a, in a strong way. So what in general do you do in your job as VP internal? So it's a pretty broad portfolio. I run the uh, different events for SMU, be that the Halloween event to Faculty Olympics to smaller events like our Super Bowl party, the SMU Bowl. Can you describe a bit of what you do in your position? I'm technically in charge of all our certain groups. Our 230 clubs, 16 services. Well, also a lot of communications work. So you'll probably have seen my name in your email from the email listserv, but also the Facebook page, the Twitter account, and Instagram. This year I've been doing a lot of bookings for them since we don't have a building. Both fall and winter activities night are on me. I also have francophone affairs and community affairs under my portfolio now. And there's also mental health. So we had mental health awareness week uh, happening right now. Oh, and first year affairs. So I'm the advisor for the first year council and I help keep that running effectively. You are the VP University Affairs for SMU. Indeed. So what does that mean? It's um, coordinating, you know, any of our, our relationships are working with the administration. So what do you do in your position as VP Finance? Essentially, I help facilitate most of the finances of SMU, from like club funding to whether or not helping out um, certain departments. It's stuff that SMU can't do on its own is a lot of what happens here. Is it true that there's cash in your desk at all times? <laughs> no, absolutely not. One of the things uh, that was in your platform was uh, the fall reading week thing. How uh, receptive has the administration been so far? I think it's been pretty receptive so far from my understanding. Last time it was run in 2015, they were concerned that if we were to start school early, it would impact people's rent and the fact that, you know, some people have eight month leases. But um, from the stats that we have from over 4,500 people, it's only 9% of the student body. Uh, there's no yes or no, but like, I think there's a good chance. What's something that SMU spends money on that most students might not know about? I feel like a lot of students don't necessarily know we administer the health and dental plan. Why do you think that most SMU executives ran uncontested? It's a difficult job, it's a lot of work, and it's kind of thankless as well, in the sense that students don't have a good impression of SMU. Bigger trust is going to come with the fall reading week results, is going to come with, you know, Jacob's SU uh, policy. Right now, students are able to take electives pass-fail or SU, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. The plan would be to allow students the ability to convert that P into whatever letter grade they got. So how long have you had your peanut butter addiction? I, that, that's been a long time, like since I was like five or six. How can SMU members be sure that this isn't affecting your work? I know mental health was one of the things you talked about in your platform and reducing yeah. wait times for legal counseling. Uh, have you been talking to admin about that? Yeah, so we have uh, monthly check-ins with uh, counseling. Uh, and I've been raising like the wait times, uh, the lack of resources. There is the wellness hub that's being developed. The emphasis there is on wait times. Do you have any tips for students about how to improve their hygiene divi? I don't like that word. I thought people liked it. <laughs> Are you worried about Concordia interfering in the SMU elections? <laughs> yeah, I'm really concerned about the CSU this year, you know, meddling. Hopefully you don't get any tips from Donald Trump, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. We'll uh, have to make uh, better plans for that. Yeah, I agree. Well, as much as I've enjoyed interrogating the executives of our student government, it actually does seem like they have a fair bit of work to do. If you're still confused, you can always drop by their office hours, which anybody's welcome to attend. We encourage you to stay tuned, though, because for our next episode, things are going to get pretty spicy as Smooth's elections kick off. Mm -hmm.